All right. So, yes, Pink October continues. Even though we're drawing to the end of the month, the close, we still have our discussions about breast cancer awareness and the various aspects of that. Now, today we're going to be talking about how you support a loved one with breast cancer. Nobody wants to hear that diagnosis, right? But it does happen. People do, de do get diagnosed, and it's very important that they have a good support system to help them through the whole process of diagnosis, treatment, and the aftermath, in fact. So we'll be talking today with our guests. Rosetta Ntirwa Boachi is a PRO of the National Association of Registered Midwives, Ghana, and Reverend Benio Seidia. He's a performance consultant and coach, and he's part of the City family, actually, as well. Welcome to both of you. Thank a you. A very good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Great Thank you to see you. Us. Oh, it's a pleasure. So we're talking about how loved ones can support a patient who has been diagnosed with breast cancer. Very important conversation sure. indeed. Now, first of all, you're a midwife. How do you even break the news to someone who, as a medical professional, you've discovered has breast cancer? How do you even begin to tell the person that news? Okay, thank you very much um, for this opportunity. And um, I would love to greet all midwives out there and say a big hello to them. All right, so with this question, sometimes it's a bit delicate. And um, looking at our setup in our various facilities, you know, when it comes to the government sector, um, there is no proper, um, that kind of privacy sometimes. Mm. And so mm. breaking the news actually sometimes become quite... Very awkward. Eh? Yes, yeah, kind of awkward, but we try to manage our way out with it. And um, with... With such situations, it's always advised that um, the family is there. You always have to do mm. it when at least there's this partner or this person that the person has in, um, that kind of um, hope or that kind of affection for to okay. be around emotionally. Rosetta, what would, what would be the ideal setting? If you, if you had an ideal setting where you could take someone and their family to break that kind of news, what would that look like? Okay, so um, the place has to at least look calm. You have to get a place where there is no noise around mm -hmm. so you can interact directly with them and they will know that you are really listening to them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you are talking to them too, you make sure that um, before you reassure, you reassure them that you're about to tell them something. Mm -hmm. But at least they should know that um, no matter what the situation is, if it's curable, then the, it's, it's good to go. So it can be cured. Okay. Or if it's not too... You, you have to still find your way out and they make sure that with the serene atmosphere and everything, the partner or family supports around, you do it in such a way that the person, no matter how big this is, can take it normal and cool. And cool. Sure. Okay. What do you do if you have a patient that has a very bad reaction to that news? Okay. Um, in fact, pe people actually turns out to, especially in, our, in Africa here, in our Ghana especially, you know, People have this perce per perception that yes. should something happen to them, they relate it to the supreme being and all spiritual other, forces. other spiritual forces. And you tell them that this is the problem we notice and they start shouting, mm -hmm. you know, and the first thing they want to do is to call their pastor or whoever they have believed in. So, um, you know, we, 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 <laughs> we try our possible best, you know. Yeah. We try our very possible best to let them know the situation and know the critical effect of it so that um, in every aspect of it they can be guided through the way. Okay, um, let's come to you Rev. <laughs> All right. Now, how do you prep a family for this? Perhaps, you know, as a counsellor, this bad news has come or is coming. Now, the person who is being diagnosed is the person probably bearing the most burden of, of grief or whatever it is. What about the surrounding people, the periphery, the, the family? How do you even begin to counsel those people? Well, once again, thank you for having me and a great good morning to your cherished viewers. Um, the truth is, no bad news can be carried any, any better, hmm. no matter who is sharing it or how it's being shared. But it can be cushioned in a way that the impact and the effects can at least be manageable. So, you know, um, listening to what Rosetta had mentioned, it is very ideal that the preparation element, you know, is mm -hmm. very important. You see, everything don't need to be in a surprise. When someone start, you know, to take the steps towards finding out what could be wrong with them, 
of course, it shouldn't be secretive. She mentioned something how mm. our culture mm -hmm. influences how we go about things. People, you know, are quiet about what is wrong with them. Yes. And no one in the family knows about it. Husbands could keep things away from their wives until it's late. Wives could do the same until it's late. So by the time that you are breaking the news, your family is not well prepared through that. And sometimes the disclosure element helps. Well, some people don't want to trouble their family. Maybe they think, oh, it, the doctor says they've, they've felt something that feels like a lump. Okay, but there has to be further tests, so I'll wait. I won't say anything now because I don't want anybody to worry. Okay, then you go maybe for a mammogram and they say, oh, okay, this, they've seen something, they want to do further tests, so maybe they'll do a breast scan, and you still think it's too soon to say something. Let me just keep it to myself for now. I don't want my husband to worry or my, my parents to worry. Then you go further and they discover that, okay, yes, you know, the, there's a, a, you know, a, 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 a yes, melanoma or malignant there, and you're like, ah, okay, now they have to know, and then it becomes a surprise to them. So the patient could be trying to protect their loved ones by keeping that information, and maybe not intentionally being secretive, but just thinking of the other people's feelings as well. Well, if you talk partner, you mentioned for better or for, or for worse. worse. The journey we take together is together. Your pain is mine, mm. and mine should be yours. The truth about it is that if I really care about you and you go to the hospital, even if I'm not there, ideally I should, but if I'm not, um, I want to find out what happened, what were the feedbacks, what are the reports. Hmm. You know, because, listen, if you are married to you and you part away, you, my, my life is messed up. Because yeah. I love you, you're part of my life, we've built this, and um, I want to say um, a happy anniversary to my wife. Today is our 14th year anniversary. Oh, yes. happy anniversary. Thank you. you know, so um, it's, it's a journey um, that you take together. If you're going through pain, it impacts my life. So you're not the only one actually in the pain. That is why supporting one another is very critical mm. and ideal in that journey. All right, so for me, it is very mm. important that when the process begins, I want to know, I want to find out. And doing that, you are also helping me to, <coughs> excuse me, read more about it, find more about it. What are ways I can support you? Recently, I, I heard on one radio station people discussing something happened during a wife's pregnancy. And the wife jumped on you know, a support group of women. And the husband only you know, got a message and picked the wife when he realized that she's in this group and she's sharing so, so much. And in that, she's even shared about how the husband does not know anything and not get any support from the man. So the argument was, that, okay, so the husband said, no, get off the group, I'm here. Talk Why are you going through this? And I don't know about it. Mm -hmm. But people that are third parties are all over uh, you know, our issues. And they are even bashing me for not supporting you on something I know you nothing know. about. You know, so it's ideal that when you go through stuff, listen, that's your partner. If you cannot tell your partner, who else? I understand if it's the extended family. I okay. understand okay. if the extended family is not part of it, if the children possibly might not be brought in on board at the early stages. Mm. But along the line, if I'm your partner, trust me, if something is going wrong with me, you're the person I can share with. Who else? Okay, Rosetta, you're a medical professional. Sure. How do you counsel somebody who does not want to tell her spouse that um. this is what's going on? It's, I mean, a patient's privacy is a patient's yes. privacy yes. and you cannot breach that without sure. their consent sure so what do you do okay so you we find a ways and means <laughs> oh, and then yeah. we let them understand the situation and as um the effects or the impacts that they're going to have in future so let's say that we have sometimes you do hiv test and then you realize mm. the pregnant woman is positive mm -hmm. and then you would want mm -hmm. to check that of the husband he tells she tells you no and sometimes yeah. more times the moment you get the husband they are negative so sometimes mm. it's like it's most of them actually right. that, that was a heavy hmm. can you, you see the way you said hmm. can you hear the repeat <laughs> <laughs> oh yes it's true like we actually do guess those like we we have them a lot Ooh. you check the woman and then she's hiv positive we're and talking about breast cancer but let yes, me i'll just pass on this so yes you yeah. check and then she is positive 
and then you advise that the husband comes for other um, other tests as well so that we know how the treatment is going to be like mm -hmm. and then she would tell you no no i won't do that i don't want him to know it's an airborne disease you see <laughs> So in this aspect, you know, they have their rights and yes. it's protected. And you are not in any way um, permitted to, permitted to, to break the news yeah. or go be, um, behind them to do what they don't want. Yes. So in this aspect, you, have, you just have to use your own discretion and try to let them understand the situation, the importance of getting somebody involved. Yes. And then after letting them know, sometimes um, if the dialogue is not working, you can as well introduce them to some partners or some people with the same effects and then they can come in with their stories mm -hmm. to encourage motivate them as to know the needful um, thing to do of in, um, inviting in either the family or the partner because mm -hmm. as we're talking here we're mentioning partner partner but some people actually don't have husbands that's correct and they may be in the same situation so who cares for them so the family, who do you trust in the family? Mm. Who is the person mm. that you can always cry on? Okay. So um, if you have that person, and even it's not a family member, a church member, a pastor, or mm. anybody you think you can invite or you trust so much in the society, then we are ready. We are, we are ready to cooperate with the two of you okay. and then make sure that things are better uh, understood. Okay, I'd love for the two of you to quickly tell me how you would support a, you know, a family member or a spouse to support the patient throughout the whole process so they've been diagnosed one now sometimes they can go through lengthy treatment chemotherapy radiation how do you brace that person for what's ahead because it can really be like diving into the unknown no one knows what the outcome will be but still trying to keep their hopes up and keep them positive so that they can in turn support the patient sure. how do you counsel that person um, I, I think one of the greatest things is you see a lot of people communicate but few people connect mm. it's ideal that you can connect with the person I think it was Dexter Yaga that said that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care mm. so it's ideal that the person can really feel you're there mm. and your care is not just vocalized but it's demonstrated, it's shown, yes. right, all the way through. Be an ear, you okay. know, sometimes, and a lot of things in life train you, you know, to some of these things. And like she said correctly, you know, sometimes it doesn't have to be blood relation. Someone mm. who is present, because so, there are some friends who stick closer than even brothers or, you know, That's siblings, true. you know. And mm -hmm. you know you can rely yeah. on. I think ultimately you're talking about having a quality social circle okay. that can support you through whatever challenges that you could meet. So mm -hmm. for me, the critical thing is be an ear and don't only vocalize care, but also demonstrate, demonstrate it. It's, it. A, it's important. Okay. Let them know you are there at, you know, 3 a.m. at 1, you know, midnight. They can call on you. They can call on you and okay. you will drive there or walk there. Possibly. Fantastic. Finally, so um, and some people, are, when it comes to the psychological effects of certain things, you know, this is a huge thing. When, when the name cancer alone is a blown, like it blows you away. So um, as a partner or a family support, you are not supposed to say, um, what can I do for you? When you ask such questions, you know, mm. it gets them thinking too much. Mm. Oh, so now I'm so hopeless. Like I've come to the point that you know people are now asking what they can do for me but if you are able to say oh we are in this together okay you know those phrases we are in this together we will conquer this together right. let's do um Beat i'll it. get this anytime you need me just call me and uh, my phone will never be on silent i'll always be at okay a call away so those kind of communications are always good but um it's advisable also that i pass this on okay. um Quickly. they have to make sure that if you are in a support and you are the support person you also have to take care of yourself but sometimes mm. they pay attention to the mm. patient mm. Yeah. and, and then, then they lose themselves That's in the correct. process okay. so they are also supposed to know that their health is also in the line okay. and they also don't have to stress themselves too, too much, much. Okay. when they think they need um further support to a psychologist or something it's important that they do that, that. Okay. thank you so much rosetta thank you reverend bernie thank you Kokui. nice having you both on set all right sure that's it. Advice for people who are supporting breast cancer patients. Wise words from our guests.